Nadina Dixon, I'm a Darug Ewan and Wiradjuri uh, multidisciplinary artist with uh, kinship to, of course, Darug country through my Locke family line. And then I also have kinship to um, Darawal Bidjigal country through the Sims Ella Dixon uh, family kinship. So I'm um, really um, pleased to be here to yarn with you today and share my practice as, a, as an artist and cultural practitioner. I'm a um, master weaver and I've been training for many years in um, traditional knowledges that's been handed down through my family line. So I feel very um, privileged and um, love being able to share and, and talk about uh, traditional knowledge uh, through um, embodied art making practice. So a lot of my um, practice is um, based on country and, and uses the materials and the traditional gathering um, techniques that our people have been maintaining for thousands of years. And I just find so much beauty and strength in being able to get on country and, and you know, observe uh, reverence and, and be present, you know, in my, in my process of, of walking this spiritual path as a, a, a teacher and, and, and at the same time um, continuing to learn under the guidance of my senior elders and master weavers. My art practice is deeply embedded in country, in Nura. Um, so this is some of the vine that I work with when I'm making um, eel traps and um, fish traps. And of course the eel trap is uh, connected directly to um, Darug country because this was an eel country. And at the back of me here you'll see some of the work contains the eels, uh, which are uh, of course seen uh, visibly all across our country in the Sydney Basin and that is referencing the ancestral eel that is the creation mother of all the eels and so we observe the cycles of the eels and when it's the right time to harvest the eels so that was one of the first early shared uh, food sources in, in our shared histories Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal that the eels was very quickly recognised um, as of course uh, delicacy and as a rich uh, form of, of beautiful food and so having to know when when's a good time when the eels are abundant and you know that that you're not going to damage their uh, reproductive cycle by taking too much and knowing which eels to take and how to um, you know cook it simply so one of our ways of cooking the eel I was of, of course with the guy me lily, so wrapping the eel in the guy me lily and then placing it on the coals. And it, it being a, a very high source of protein and, and kept the people strong and healthy on, on country. And even the gathering of the eels and, and knowing um, that when, when they um, swim into the eel trap, which can be, you know, as big as two metres. Um, you can fit a person in the eel traps. So I've been commissioned to create eel traps for some different events and um, I'm always amazed at the uh, engineering and the ingenuity behind the construction because not only are they super strong, um, but the vines contain kinetic energy. So they're strong, but they're also flexible. And of course, the eel being a very powerful um, being, they're gonna their their weight and their strength is is gonna compromise the um the frame. So it has to be able to be flexible and move. And but at the same time, the eels once they go inside, they can't turn around. So then that is how our people would understand the anatomy of the eel and how to make the traps. <laughs> 